The first part of the exercise is to calculate growth rates of output and productivity for each of the countries in our sample. Now to do this, first of all I'm going to calculate measures of productivity using the data in the spreadsheet. For example, for Denmark in 2003, I can take the ratio of 2003 output to 2003 employment. Similarly for 2012, I take the ratio of output in 2012 to employment in 2012. I can then copy these cells down to get productivity measures for each of the countries in my sample. The problem with these calculations, however, is that they are very hard to interpret because the numerator and denominator of each of these expressions are measured in different units. The numerator is measured as an index of output and the denominator is measured in terms of thousands of workers. This means that the numbers themselves are very hard to interpret and it's impossible to compare one country against another. To do this we're going to have to calculate growth rates. To calculate the growth rates in this case we make use of the compound growth rate formula. If we have a series which is growing at a constant proportional rate, then the value of the series in day, at day t, yt, is equal to 1 plus the percentage growth rate g divided by 100 to the power t multiplied by the starting value y0. With a little bit of algebra, we can solve for the percentage growth rate which is consistent with the starting value y0 and the end value yt as given by this expression here. And that's the expression we'll use in our spreadsheet to solve for the growth rate. To calculate growth rates I'm going to use the formula that we've just discussed. First of all to calculate the growth rate of output for Denmark using the formula I have 100 multiplied by the ratio of output in 2012 to output in 2003 then I must raise that to the power 1 over 10, or 0.1. Minus 1, and then close parentheses, that will give me the growth rate of outputs between these two dates. And as we can see here, it's negative, reflecting the fact that manufacturing output actually fell in Denmark between these two dates. Next, I can copy that down for all the different countries in my sample and we can see that there is actually quite a wide range of output growths between these countries. Now I do the same calculations for productivity. So I have 100 multiplied by the level of productivity in 2012 divided by the level of productivity in 2003 and again I need to raise that to the power 1 over 10 or 0.1 and subtract 1 and close parentheses, that gives me the growth rate of productivity between these two dates. Again I'll copy that down and that gives me the growth rate of productivity for each of these economies over this time period. Next I'm going to create a scattered graph of productivity growth against output growth to see if this gives us the same relationship that we identified in the main text. First of all, I choose the two series that I want to graph. Next, I go to Insert, Scatter and choose the first option here. This will give me a graph of productivity growth against output growth for the 10 countries in my sample. Now we see from this that it's clear that there is an upward slope in relationship between these two variables, which is consistent both with our original hypothesis and with the relationship that we found for the 10 countries in our, the main text. We do see that there is one big outlying observation here. This point is the data point for uh, Iceland, which we saw um, was an outlier for the whole sample and is also clearly an outlier for this subsample of the data. However, even if we were to take the Iceland observation out of our sample, we would still have a fairly strong upward sloping relationship between the two series. So we conclude from this that our subsample of data for the 10 smallest economies in our sample is consistent with Verdun's law just in the same way as the subsample consisting of the 10 largest economies in our full sample of data.